Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. I'm Tatiana. I'm a registered associate nutritionist and working in the ESS nutrition and wellbeing team. Today, we are going to be discussing our heart health. So this week it's Know Your Numbers Week. So Know Your Numbers Week is all about encouraging adults to find out their blood pressure numbers in the same way that you know your height and weight. And this could help us keep in a healthy range and prevent deaths from heart attacks or stroke. Also at the end of this month, it's World Heart Day, which basically aims to spread awareness about heart health. So in light of both of these events, we're going to be talking all about heart health and what we can do to keep our hearts healthy. So having a think about the dietary recommendations, as well as lifestyle habits that we can um, do to keep our hearts healthy. So why is our heart health important? Well, cardiovascular disease, so things like heart attacks or stroke, um, basically the leading cause of death worldwide. So they're responsible for around 31% of deaths. And most cardiovascular diseases can actually be prevented through diet and lifestyle changes. So thinking about things like smoking, maintaining a healthy weight, cutting back on alcohol um, and doing some physical activity. But to start things off, we're going to be speaking about dietary recommendations. So it's really important that we follow these to try and keep our hearts healthy, but also to help us maintain a healthy weight. So my first and foremost tip is to enjoy a variety of fruit and vegetables. So fruit and veg are really important to provide us with vitamins, minerals and fibre, but also other plant compounds such as antioxidants, which really help to protect our hearts. So around a third of our diet should be made up of fruit and vegetables and we should be aiming to eat at least five portions of these per day. So don't forget that our fresh, our frozen and our canned and dried also count towards our five day. Um, so usually a serving size is around 80 grams or a medium piece of fruit. So for example, an apple or a pear, three tablespoons of vegetables like peas and so on. And as I've mentioned before, we should aim for a range of different colours and types to make sure that we're getting all of those different plant compounds. So my next tip would be to eat less salt. So eating too much salt can increase your risk of developing a high blood pressure. Now, around 30 people, 30% 30 of people in the UK have high blood pressure, but most of them don't know unless it's checked by their GP. Now, a high blood pressure increases strain in our heart and this can increase your risk of heart disease. So a healthy blood pressure should be around 120 over 80. So have a chat with your GP if you would like to find out your blood pressure and they will be able to do that for you. So it's recommended that we eat no more than six grams of salt per day. So that's about a teaspoon. And this isn't just the salt that we add to our foods, but also the salt that's already there. So things like our breakfast cereals, our savoury snacks or cheese, they all have a high salt content. So when you're eating your meals, try not to add salt at the table. Instead, maybe season them with pepper, spices, herbs and so on. As well as this, it's really important that we're continually looking at food labels to compare our food products and choose those which are lower in salt. So the next thing we can do is understand our fats. So cholesterol is a really big topic when we're speaking about heart health. So cholesterol is basically a fatty substance found in your blood. Now it is produced naturally in our liver or it can be found in some foods. So we do actually need some cholesterol to stay healthy. So it's used to make certain hormones and vitamin D as well as bile acids in our stomach which help us digest and absorb our food. Now there are two main types of cholesterol. So we've got our low density lipoprotein cholesterol. So this is also known as our bad cholesterol. And if we have too much of this, then our arteries can become blocked. And then we've also got our high, di high density lipoprotein. So this is also known as our good cholesterol. And basically this helps reduce our levels of bad cholesterol. So having too much LDL or total cholesterol can increase our risk of having heart attacks or stroke. So usually having a high cholesterol is mainly caused by eating too much saturated fat, not doing enough physical activity, smoking or being overweight. 
So what kinds of fat should you be eating? Well, we do need some fat in our diet as these provide us with our essential fatty acids as well as fat soluble, soluble vitamins as well as energy. But most of us are eating too much fat. So saturated fat is mainly found in animal products. So things like butter, full fat dairy, sausages, so on. And having a lot of saturated fat is linked with increased levels of our bad LDL cholesterol. So what we should be trying to do is replacing saturated fat in our diets with moderate amounts of monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. Now these could help to reduce our bad cholesterol. We should also really try to be avoid trans fats and these are found in processed foods and these are associated with an increased risk of heart disease. So we need to be trying to avoid those where possible. So as well as thinking about our fats, we need to be thinking about our oily fish and omega threes. So fish is really a great source of lean protein, but oily fish is also rich in a type of polyunsaturated fat called omega three. Now, omega three, we know is really beneficial for our heart's health. So we should be trying to aim to eat around two portions of fish per week one of which should be oily. So this could be anything from trout, salmon, mackerel and so on. But if you do not eat fish or you eat a veg vegetarian or vegan or plant based diet, you can get omega three from other sources. But it's important to remember that you'll need to eat more of these to gain the right amount. So it can be found in some of our fortified foods as well as some of our nuts and seeds and oils. Now, plants, sterols and sanols are also a really interesting um, area when we're thinking about heart health. So plant, sterols and sterols can occur naturally um, in some of our plant foods. So things like our beans, lentils, our nuts and seeds. And they have a similar structure to cholesterol. So they reduce the absorption of our bad cholesterol in the blood. So they can be really beneficial. So research suggests that if we eat around 1.5 to 2.4 grams of plant stanols or sterols per day, it could reduce our cholesterol by 7 to 10%. So that's a really large amount. So to be effective, they need to be consumed with our meals when we're eating other um, foods. And to provide this amount, we need to consume either a full one fortified mini yogurt drink per day. So things like your Benacol Proactive or two to three portions of fortified spread, yogurt, milk and so on. So the next thing that we can do to keep our heart healthy is to boost up our fibre intake. So we should be eating around 30 grams of fibre per day. Now this we know is beneficial for our heart health, but as well as this, eating higher fibre foods such as whole grains, pulses, fruit and vegetables can also um, help us feel more full, which can be useful if you're trying to lose weight. So where possible, we should be changing things like our white breads for wholemeal or granary breads or using brown rice, brown pasta or whole grain breakfast cereals. So on the slide now, you can see the fibre difference between the different slices of bread. Um, so it's a really easy swap that you can make just to boost up your fibre. Some foods are high in soluble fibre, which again helps to lower our bad cholesterol. So things like our oats and pulses, so our beans, chickpeas and lentils and so on are really good for this as well. As well as this, there's a type of soluble fibre which we can find in oats called beta glucan. And if we eat a lot of this, it can also help to lower our cholesterol. So we could aim to eat around three grams of this per day, and this could be just from a bowl of porridge or muesli, or trying things like oat bread, oat cakes, oat milk, and so on. So the next thing we can do is to consume less free sugar. Now there are two main forms of sugar in our diet. We've got our natural sugars. So these are sugars that are found in milk, unsweetened dairy products and in our whole fruits and vegetables. But then we've got our free sugars. So these are sugars which are added to foods and drinks. So things like our cakes, sweets, sauces, as well as things like honeys and syrups 
fruit juices and smoothies. So the sugar in our fruit juice and smoothies are called free sugars because when we blend up our fruit, the natural sugar that was originally trapped in the cell structure is released. And this basically makes it more available and faster to absorb by the body. So we should be aiming to have no more than 30 grams of free sugars per day. So this is about seven teaspoons. Now, we need to make sure we're not having more than this, because if we eat too much sugar, it can cause us to gain weight as well as increase um, the risk of tooth decay, as well as being linked to heart disease. So there are a few things that we can do to cut down our sugar intake. So first and foremost, make sure you're having a look at those nutrition labels. Use that front of pack colour coding. Avoid those that have more red and go for more that have green and amber colours on the front. We can use the Eat Well guide to make sure we're eating a healthy and balanced diet. We can base our meals on our starchy carbohydrate kind of foods. Um, we can be eating at least five portions of fruit and vegetables per day and then cutting down on foods which are high in free sugar. So things like our fizzy drinks, our confectionery and desserts. As well as this, we can be trying to swap drinks that contain sugar for diet options where possible. And then if you're having things like fruit um, from a tin, try and pick those that are naturally canned in juice rather than syrup with lots of added extra sugar. So another really interesting thing that we can potentially do for our heart health is to try a Mediterranean style diet. So there's been a lot of research around the Mediterranean style diet and heart health and studies have found that this style of diet can reduce our risk of heart disease. Now, typically, this is a very healthy style of diet. So it's rich in fruit and vegetables. It has oily fish and our whole grains with modest amounts of meat and dairy. And then the main fat source used within this diet is olive oil. But again, this is used in moderation. So that was a whistle stop tour of the things that we can eat to make sure that we are keeping our heart healthy. But as well as this, there's different lifestyle habits, which are also really important for our heart health. So first and foremost, maintaining a healthy weight is really important. So being overweight can increase the risk of having type 2 diabetes, as well as putting an extra strain on our heart and lead to fatty material building up in our arteries. And this can increase our risk of heart and circulatory diseases. So being overweight can lead to a fatty material building up in your arteries. And if our arteries get clogged up, this can increase our risk of heart attack or stroke. So to maintain a healthy weight, we should be eating well. So thinking about what I've said previously in this presentation, having a little think about portion size um, and making sure that we're not overeating, as well as trying to be a bit more active and looking out for our food labels as well. So exercise or physical activity is also really important. So it's really important that we're physically active every day. So if we're inactive or sedentary, it can lead to an increased risk of heart disease. And this is because, again, this can increase the risk of the fatty material building up in our arteries. As well as this, our heart is a muscle. So like any other muscle in our bodies, it needs physical activity to help it work properly and stay strong. So actually being active can reduce our risk of developing some heart diseases by as much as 35 percent. So we should be aiming for around 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise or 75 minutes of high intensity exercise per week. So that could literally be 30 minutes per day. As well as this, we need to be thinking about including strength training activities twice a week to really strengthen our muscles. So this could be anything from heavy digging in the garden to yoga to Pilates or strength and weight training at the gym. So exercise is also really important to help us maintain that healthy weight, to help control our blood pressure, as well as um, reducing stress, improving our sleep, as well as having mental health benefits. So as I've mentioned before, it doesn't actually mean that you have to go to the gym every day. It's just about reducing our sedentary behaviours and incorporating a bit more movement into our day. So we could do things like trying a home workout, taking the stairs instead of the lift, walking to work and so on. So the next lifestyle thing that we can do to keep our hearts healthy is to quit smoking. So quitting smoking is actually the best thing you can do for your heart health.
So smoking is one of the main causes of coronary heart disease. And this is because smoking basically makes the walls of our arteries sticky from the chemicals in the cigarettes. And this means that the fatty material is more likely to stick to them and clog up our arteries. But it's really interesting that apparently 20 minutes after you quit smoking, your heart rate and blood pressure return to normal. So this is really beneficial for our heart health. If you are a smoker and you are looking to quit, the NHS Smoke Free website is a really great resource and place to start. So the next thing we should be thinking about is our alcohol intake. So we should be aiming to have no more than 14 units per week and spread our drinking over three or more days. So 14 units is about six pints of beer or six medium glasses of wine. And then we should also be aiming to have at least two alcohol free days each week. If we regularly consume more than this, it could increase our risk of developing heart disease, but also things like some cancers and liver disease. On top of this, our alcohol is also really calorie dense, so it contains seven calories per gram. And this isn't to mention what you eat alongside your drink. So if you think about your cheesy chips after your night out or your snacks at the pub or your fry up the next morning, this can all increase our calorie intake and could contribute to excess energy intake and weight gain. So. Another thing to really consider is stress and anxiety. So stress alone won't cause heart disease. However, it is linked to unhealthy habits that could increase our risk. So if we're stressed, we could smoke or we could maybe eat um, less healthily. We could turn to drinking a bit too much alcohol or not have time to be physically active. So there are different ways we can reduce our stress and anxiety. So being physically active, writing a journal, meditation, but one study has found that mindfulness could actually reduce the risk of heart attack or stroke by almost 50 percent. So that's a really good thing that we can try. Um, and this basically could help lower the production of stress hormones, so things like cortisol. And this basically helps you reduce the physical symptoms of stress. So it could lower our blood pressure, calm down our breathing and get more oxygen around our body. So that was a whistle stop tour of what we can do to keep our hearts healthy. If you're interested in finding out a bit more, the NHS and British Heart Foundation have made a tool to help you check how healthy your heart is. So you can just type into your browser Heart Health Check NHS and you can fill out a little quiz and it will tell you how healthy your heart is, as well as giving you a few more tips to improve your heart's health. So in summary, there's a few different things we can do to keep our hearts healthy. It is best to focus on improving your eating and exercise patterns as the main goal instead of just aiming for weight loss. So if we're eating well and being active, you might not instantly lose weight, but you can improve your heart health. Um, so thinking about increasing our fruit and vegetable consumption, our oily fish and omega-3s, trying to reduce that saturated fat in our diet, increasing our fiber, decreasing the salt, watching our alcohol and smoking, and also thinking about being physically active, as well as the implications of this all on our mental health, which is really important. So if you would like to find out more, um, we have our monthly wellness newsletter. So this basically highlights the health and wellbeing initiatives that we are looking at each month. Um, if you would like a copy of this sent to your inbox, just drop us an email at ess.wellness at compass-group.co.uk and we can add you to the monthly mailing list. We also have our social media, so TikTok, Instagram and YouTube. Just search for We Are ESS, the tip videos and lots of information on there as well. And then our team are always on hand to answer your nutrition and wellbeing queries. We're also here to come and deliver talks to you or your teams, but one on one sessions or we can come and support at your health fairs and events. So please do get in touch if you require anything from us. And we also offer virtual solutions. So thank you very much for listening today. I hope you have found that helpful. Um, if you've got any questions, please pop them in the Q&A box and I can get back to you um, where I can. Or if not, if you think of something after, please drop us an email at ess.wellness at compass-group.co.uk. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>